The NATO summit in Vilnius began with a big announcement. Turkey's decision to lift their veto on Sweden's accession was an important step forward. But that immediate cause for celebration was somewhat overshadowed by a statement from Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, today, who said it was absurd that NATO leaders had not provided any timetable on Ukraine's prospects for future membership. There are plenty of countries in Europe that believe it's a moral imperative for NATO to set out a clear path. President Biden had signalled that he was reluctant to make any commitments until it's fully understood how the war ends. What happens, for instance, if there's a ceasefire, but part of Ukraine remains occupied? Tonight, however, NATO has issued a statement clarifying its position. Ukraine, it says, will be invited to join, quote, when the conditions are met. A form of words the Secretary General thinks will give Ukraine some confidence. We reaffirmed that Ukraine will become a member of NATO and agreed to remove the requirement for a membership action plan. This would change Ukraine's membership path from a two-step process to a one-step process. We also made clear that we will issue an invitation for Ukraine to join NATO when allies agree and conditions are met. Let's cross then to Vilnius, Lithuania. Um, our colleague Lewis Vaughan Jones is there. So pick the bones out of that, Lewis. What does all that mean? Well, Christian, there's no doubt it is a significant statement from Jens Stoltenberg. It's been a significant day, actually, at this summit. NATO has made significant commitments to Ukraine. Extra military packages, for example. That, uh, what Jens Stoltenberg was talking about there, was basically meant they're going to speed up the application process for Ukraine to join uh, NATO. They're going to do away with some of the normal uh, procedure. And they've also committed to giving Ukraine effectively a louder voice, a, a clearer form of direct communication with NATO itself. So significant uh, developments from the NATO side. President Zelensky, well, he flew in here uh, this afternoon and uh, this evening he's been at a uh, dinner with other heads of state, um, a more social uh, affair this evening. But just a few hours earlier, he was at a rally, actually, uh, believe it or not, just a few miles from here, Ukrainians and lots of his supporters uh, were there and he spoke at that rally. And just take a listen to the language that he was using. Today here in Vilnius, we have a Ukrainian flag from the battlefield in Bakhmut. Bakhmut is one of the biggest battles for freedom in Europe. It will be remembered by our grandparents and our grandsons. I came here today believing in the partners, believing in a strong NATO, in a NATO that does not doubt, does not waste time and does not turn heads toward any aggressor. Ukraine will make NATO stronger and NATO will make Ukraine safer. So Zelensky wanted a direct timeline, a clear timeline for Ukraine to join NATO. He didn't get that uh, from NATO today. What will he make of what he was given? How will it be received? Well, to talk through that, I'm very pleased that we can speak to General Philip Breedlove, retired four-star uh, general of the U.S. Air Force and former head of NATO military. Thank you so much for coming on the programme. This has been a significant day here in Lithuania. What do you make of the offer, as it were, from Jens Stoltenberg, from NATO to Ukraine? Is it enough? Well, that remains to be seen. First, we do need to thank Jens. He has agreed to stay on another year. He is an incredibly good Secretary General. I was his first SACUR, and he has served since that time. Um, and I believe that his intervention to help Turkey over the hurdle to get Sweden uh, into NATO is important. Um, I do believe that the statements made by NATO are good. Um, they are short of what some want um, and maybe point to a little bit of an opportunity lost. But the good news is these guarantees uh, that Ukraine will enter, Ukraine will not require a map. And the idea that NATO agrees this will happen when the conditions are met 
these are these are good. The two audiences that were that I'm most concerned about. Remember, I'm not a politician. I'm a military person. The two audiences I'm concerned about are the Ukrainian soldiers on the battlefield. Are they going to look at this and say, NATO is with us and NATO is going to stand by us? Uh, that's the first and most important audience. And then the second most important audience in my mind is Mr. Putin. He needs to know this is a done deal. This is going to happen. And he's not going to be able to stop it. We need to send Mr. Putin a clear message that his follies in Ukraine starting in 2014 are not going to succeed. And so that's the second audience and the second message. Well, interestingly, message. I just want to jump in there I just because I wonder whether NATO have missed an opportunity to go further here because I spoke to a retired British army officer who said uh, one option would have been you get a ceasefire, however fragile, between Russia and Ukraine and you get NATO membership then at that point, and that could have been a really significant offer from NATO, but they haven't done that. Yeah, that's uh, a tough. That's a tough position to take, because a ceasefire leaves uh, Ukraine in a tough position. Um, the the ideal position, of course, is the position that President Zelensky and the people of Ukraine are increasingly every day more strident in, and that is all of Russia out of all of Ukraine. That's the best point from which to bring Ukraine into the alliance. But uh, a ceasefire, which in the long run advantages Russia, is something that would have to be managed in a very delicate way. General Philip Breedlove, we must leave it there, but thank you so much for your time and lending us a bit of your insight and expertise and with regards to those uh, NATO military operations. And Christian, I will uh, just hand back uh, to you with a reflection that, although it is very, very quiet here, I think they've literally turned the lights off uh, behind me. They're giving me a hint. Uh, there's still a significant amount uh, to be done here because this is only day one, and we do have day two, so a lot more uh, comments, and we'll hear uh, from a lot more of the interest parties here There's tomorrow. There's no the sympathy here, Lewis. There's no sympathy here. We need our pound of flesh. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for staying on for us.